Then welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. Today, today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto 5, uh, chap, uh, Canto 5, Chapter 1, and uh, verse number 6. So, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. All glory to you. Now I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for giving your valuable association and time. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Om Vigyan Timirandasya Ganajana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Mena Tasma Shri Guru Vena Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Dideve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya Rezitarine Pancha Kalpa the Rubis Jakripa Sindhu Beva Japatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaha Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasavi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari. So we'll go right to the translation. Well, it's the prose. We generally don't chant the prose, so we just go right the translation. <laughs> okay, Sukadeva Goswami continued, my dear King Prince Priyarat, my dear King, Prince Priyarat was a great devotee because he sought the lotus feet of Narada, his spiritual master, and thus achieved the highest perfection of transcendental knowledge. <clears throat> With advanced knowledge, he always engaged in discussing spiritual subjects and did not divert his attention to anyone else. The prince's father then asked him to take charge of ruling the world. He tried to convince Priyarata that this was his duty as indicated in the revealed scriptures. Prince Priyarat, however, was continuously practicing bhakti, bhakti yoga by constantly remembering the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus engaging all his senses in the service of the Lord. Therefore, though the order of the father could not be rejected, the prince did not welcome it. Thus, he very conscientiously raised the question of whether he might be diverted from devotional service by accepting the responsibility of ruling over the world. So can we have a uh, volunteer for reading the purport? Hare Krishna, I can read it, Ma Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. So Srila Naratam, I'm sorry, Srila Naratam Das Thakur has sung Chadiya Vaishnava Seva Nishtara Payeche Keba. Without serving the lotus feet of a pure Vaishnava or spiritual master, no one has ever attained perfect liberation from material bondage. Prince Priyavarta. Prince Priyavrata regularly served the lotus feet of Narada, and thus the prince perfectly understood transcendental subjects in truth, sat tatvaha. The word sat tatvaha means that Priyavrata knew all the facts about the spirit soul, the supreme personality of Godhead, and he also knew all about this material world and the relationship. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa. You skipped the line. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Okay, the word Satatvaha means that Priyavata knew all the facts about the spirit soul, the supreme personality of Godhead, and the relationship between the spirit soul and the supreme personality of Godhead. And he also knew all about this material world and the relationship of the spirit soul and the supreme Lord within the material world. Thus, the prince decided to engage himself only in rendering service to the Lord. 
when Priyavrata's father, Swayambhuva Manu, I'm so sorry, requested him to accept the responsibility of ruling over the world, he did not welcome the suggestion. This is the symptom of a great liberated devotee. Even though engaged in worldly affairs, he does not take pleasure in them, but remains always absorbed in the Lord's service. While thus serving the Lord, he deals externally with worldly affairs without being affected. For example, although he has no attraction for his children, he cares for them and educates them to become devotees. Similarly, he speaks to his wife with affectionate words, but he is not attached to her. By rendering devotional service, a devotee acquires all the good qualities of the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna, the 16, I'm sorry, Lord Krishna had 16,000 wives, all of them very beautiful. And although he dealt with each of them as a beloved husband, he was not attracted or attached to any of them. In the same way, although a devotee may enter family life and act very affectionately toward his wife and children, he is never attached to these activities. This verse states that by serving the lotus feet of his spiritual master, Prince Priyavrata very soon attained the perfectional stage of Krishna consciousness. This is the only way to advance in spiritual life. As stated in the Vedas, Yasya Deva Para Bhaktir Yata Deva Tata Gura Tashyati Katata Katita Yatar Yar Aha. I'll say the verse Yasya Devi Para Bhaktir Yata Devi Tata Guru Tashyaita Katita Yata Prakasananta Mahatmanaha. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. It's one of my favorite verses. That's why I wanted to say it. <laughs> Wonderful. One has unflinching faith in the Supreme Lord and the spiritual master. The essence of all Vedic knowledge is revealed to him. Svetasvatara Upanishad 623. A devotee always thinks of the Lord continuously. While chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, the words Krishna and Hare immediately remind him of all the Lord's activities. Since his entire life is engaged in the service of the Lord, a devotee cannot forget the Lord at any time. Just as an ordinary man always engages his mind in material activities, a devotee always engages his mind in spiritual activities. This is called Brahma Satra, or meditating upon the Supreme Lord always. Prince Priyavrata always or was perfectly initiated into this practice by Sri Narada. Hare Krishna. <laughs> But might be you can keep the verse up. Pavitra Madri, please keep the verse up. Okay, okay it's so nice. Yeah, uh, it's nice too. Uh, so sometimes we find that devotees ask, well, you know, I have material responsibilities, I have my. Uh, you know, I have my job, I have to take care of the house, the affairs of the house, I have to pay the bills, I have to make sure the kids are getting what they need. And I don't have any time for my spiritual life. Or how do I understand these things in the relationship to my practice of spiritual life? Well, this verse is, and the purport gives you the answer. <clears throat> and one should practice this mood of bhakti and that practice only becomes successful when one gets attached to Krishna. Attachment to Krishna develops on a certain stage of our practice, but it, we can become attached to Krishna fast if I continually practice the, in the mood of hearing about Krishna, serving Krishna, and uh, especially chanting the holy names of the Lord. So material affairs do not have to interfere with one's spiritual practice. When one can see everything in relationship to the Lord, um, the question of I and mind is where we get stuck. 
I, we identify with ourselves according to the I principle. I am this body. I am uh, female. I am male. Uh, whatever you can attach to the I principle. I am from, you know, this country. These are what we say upadis, and they're called designations, which are not actually real because they don't stand the test of time. The understanding is our relationship with Krishna is eternal. It's never been lost and it can never be lost. It can only be forgotten. And therefore, by getting attached to Krishna, we can still live in this world, but not be worldly minded. And this verse explains that one has to uh, detach themselves from deriving happiness from material activities. We may have to engage in activities that are related to the body, such as family and, and occupation, but one should not be attached to the results. One should do it as a form of duty and one should carry it out in the best possible way. Now that may seem to be difficult for those of us who are practicing Krishna consciousness. How do you not get attached to these things or the results of the activities of these things? <clears throat> well, there's only one way. You have to get attached to Krishna. <laughs> attachment, detachment <clears throat> work together. You can't just detach yourself from something and expect that to maintain. It won't maintain itself. One has to attach themselves to something higher, something better. The Mayavadis, Gyanis, even the Yogis, they work very diligently through various types of spiritual practices to detach themselves from material activities and from the results of material activities. But they can't remain because they don't attach themselves to Krishna. Aruna Krishna Padam Padam Patanti Adam Nadritya Usmam Ahangvayaha. This verse says that these persons the, uh, the jnanis, the yogis, those who are of different categories of jnanis and yogis, there's so many different categories of these. They rise, they can rise very high on the spiritual platform, but Padanti Yada, the verse says they fall down. Why? They haven't developed attachment to the lotus feet of the Lord. So we see here Prince Friyabrat, he had reached the perfectional stage. He was attached to Krishna. He was absorbed in Krishna. He was performing his sadhana in a spontaneous way every day. He was a powerful yogi. And he was a bhakti yogi. But now he's asked by, by his spiritual master, Narada Muni, to take up this... Uh, this, this business of ruling the world, because at that particular time, there was no one to do it. And he is the son of King Uttanapada. King Uttanapada's father is Swayambhu Manu. So Swayambhu, uh, uh, Dhruva Maharaj went back home, back to Godhead. So now there was no one to rule the world. So now he was next in line. But he didn't want it because he was completely fixed in Krishna consciousness. He was thinking this is a disturbance. But we have there's a Vedic injunction that one cannot disobey the orders of one's father. One's father and mother are, are seen as one's spiritual teacher and they're considered superior, they're considered to be worshipable. So one is not, one cannot disobey their orders. But here, he didn't, it says he didn't disobey, but he was thinking, how can I do this? How can I take up this responsibility, which is being asked of me, and at the same time, practice my Krishna consciousness? 
actually, he didn't want to do it. He had no desire. He was going to take on a, a very huge responsibility with great grandeur and a lot of prestige coming with that service, but he had no interest in it all. Um, finally, of course, the, you will learn as the verses go on that uh, Narada Muni didn't press him. He leave them alone, but then Lord Brahma came and asked him to do the service. And when Lord Brahma came, he had he eventually took up the service. But uh, and you'll see what happened as he took up the service. I won't reveal all of these things in this particular time period. Um, but this is a, a, a one should not uh, give up their worldly responsibilities if they still need to take be taken care of. One can detach themselves from family life and completely and move on into another ashram such as Vana Prastha and eventually Sannyasa. Only when all of the family duties are what we say taken care of. If the family duties are not taken care of, one should stay in the ashram and practice detachment. We find that in Kali Yuga, people can't do that. Everybody have, they get attached to their children, they get attached to their families, they get attached to everything they do. <laughs> Even devotees, we find that there's a sense of attachment. And if something changes, they feel lost or they feel like they have to regain something. And that's the nature of anything material. It will change and it will eventually leave us. So that's one of the inspirations that a devotee gets for taking up Krishna consciousness is that all worldly attachments and the results that come from such attachments, such as the happiness that comes from these things, are uh, that'll all be lost in time. So devotee is not really so um, enthusiastic about material responsibilities. And you'll find, and you'll see, King Priyavrata, or Prince Priyavrata was, he had reached that stage where he had no taste for anything material. One of the characters... One of the characteristics of, uh, of the devotee practicing Krishna consciousness is that they start to find that their material activities start losing color. They start to fade. What it means is they don't really have a taste for it anymore. But that's, that's normal. But for us, those of us who are still practicing in Grihastha life and have responsibilities yet. Here, this verse is, is, a, is, you should study this verse and understand how to develop the detachment. At the same time, take care of one's responsibilities. And in certain rare cases, one, when one gets so attached to Krishna, then one will just automatically leave the family and go and practice Krishna consciousness at a holy place like that. But that, that requires some um, careful understanding of the situation before one. But this point, the thing is that any attachment in this material world causes one to take another birth in this material world. Whatever little attachments we may have for anything material, no matter how dear to it as us, it causes us to again recycle in the uh, in the path of birth and death. So therefore, one has to continue to get, become attached to Krishna more and more. And Prabhupada ends by saying that a devotee, when he chants, he always thinks of Krishna. He always thinks of Srimati Radharani. He's always thinking of Krishna, whatever he do, he does. 
everything reminds him of Krishna. He tries, he sees Krishna within everything. And he sees, he sees that everything is coming from Krishna. So a devotee who is practicing Krishna consciousness properly is always in connection with Krishna, either through his energy, by realizing the nature of the energy as being non-different than Krishna, and, or directly, which is more powerful, by chanting the holy names of the Lord and remembering the Lord in, in devotional service. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada takes some time to quote this verse, Yasya Devi para Bhaktir Yata Devi Tata Guru, Tasyaita Prati Kati Te Gyarta Prakasanatra, Prakasanate Mahatmanaham. This is a really powerful verse. Now, the word unflinching faith really cements this whole particular point. That faith that is called. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, strata. Strata means firm faith. That first faith is not broken by circumstance. One has complete faith in the words of the Lord and the spiritual master. Then even if one doesn't study or even know all the Vedic knowledge, still one becomes Veda Rata, Veda Pararata. In other words, one becomes expert at the Vedas. Why? Because they understood the conclusion of the Vedas, who is, as Krishna says, the conclusion of the Vedas is to serve me, to know me, and to develop attraction for me, as Krishna says. So uh, as we practice our devotional service, we should be practicing our devotional service with a desire to get detached from these things. If we're just going on day to day in our activities and not consciously trying to detach ourselves from the material attachments and attach ourselves to Krishna, then we won't, we, we won't be able to get much benefit from our spiritual activities. One has to become what we say, uh, one has to accept that I am not in a good position now, even though you may be, you should never be satisfied with whatever position you're in. And you should be thinking how to move to the next stage. And moving to the next stage means focusing on how we can execute our devotional service with the goal in mind. I want to chant offenselessly. I want to worship the deity in the best possible way, giving my devotion to the In other words, one should be determined to accept a particular goal that is higher than where we are right now. Although if we don't do that, then our service will vacillate. Then eventually we may also leave devotional service. We always have to be pushing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward. This is a, it's not something you can wait to happen. It's proactive. And pushing forward means keeping the mind connected to the activities of devotional service every minute. Okay. And that way one can still take care of material activities and not be what we say affected by it. One can catch the big fish without getting wet. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any discussion. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj uh, for enlightening us. Uh, yeah, and you make us understand like how to balance life, like how to get attached and uh, at the same time get detached um, from our worldly duties, but to get attached to Krishna and uh, Yes, Maharaj, you explained so nicely. It was so wonderful to hear about um, the, because it is much related to our life. As a Grasta, we are always uh, in the dilemma or we are in this situation only. So thank you so much, Maharaj. So I will request devotees if they have any question, they can go now. Thank you.
I'm sure devotees are struggling with this particular feature of devotional practice. So please think about where your uh, energy is being applied and what is your struggle. So give it a, so based on that, you may present a question or a comment. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all glory to you Maharaj. Maharaj, this is a very, very wonderful topic and very applicable to the Grihasthas who are very much with interacting with social life and family members. Maharaj, I have a question in the sense that we deal with our children and we try to develop the mentality that these are the, you know, a gift from Krishna for under our care. And at the same time, when we do that, we do get attached to them uh, as well, uh, while we are doing our devotional service as well. So how do we, how do we find that? Yeah, you should be, you can be attached to them. That's okay. But that attachment shouldn't lead you away from Krishna consciousness. That's the point. And that attachment comes by seeing that they are actually part and parcel of Krishna. They're pure spirit souls have, who have been given to you as a responsibility to serve. So you can uh, guide them. Uh, as it says in the uh, as in the fifth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, one should not become father, one should not become mother, one should not become teacher, one should not become guru. If they cannot deliver to their followers, their children, their disciples from the uh, cycle of birth and death, it's a great responsibility to take on a position of taking care of others where they depend on you. So therefore, as a service to the Lord, that responsibility is given utmost importance so if you carry it out in that way and uh, affection is for them as part and parcel of Krishna so you can have affection because they, they, they actually you know they, they belong to Krishna so as your affection for Krishna is there your affection for Krishna's parts and parcels are there especially family members but that shouldn't lead you into a material uh, mood. In other words, you should be clear on your relationship with your, with your family members, how to serve them in the best possible way. Thank you, Mahara. So I think it's a constant. Yeah, the family members might not have the same understanding you do, but you can't fall into that consciousness. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. So I think it's the constant endeavor and mindfulness about our relationship with our family members would help us interact properly. Yeah. One, one should not fall down to the sentimental platform or the material bodily platform. An example would be is not giving them what they need at, according to the time, place, and circumstance. In other words, part, part of taking care of family members is to tell them no when, they, when, it's, when that's the most important thing that you, you could say to them. Whether you become popular or not, that's not the point. You have to serve them in the best way, best way possible. And that service is service to Krishna. As Prabhupada said, when one of my God sisters, she was doing pujari work and she had a two year old child um, she sent a letter to Srila Prabhupada explaining the dilemma 
of trying to balance the time between Pujari work and the needs of the child. Mm, Prabhupada said, he said that uh, child worship is more important than deity worship. That's an exact quote. He said, these children are sent to us by Krishna, therefore they should get whatever they need to become Krishna conscious. At the same time, we have the responsibility to provide the material needs up to a certain age. And then we have to also teach them to become responsible also. But if there is some affection, that's not wrong. But if that affection causes one to fall into the bodily concept of life, then that will lead to making mistakes or spoiling a child or not, or not acting in the proper way with the children. We have to get at it and make sure we don't gravitate down to the bodily conception of light. Affection is on the spiritual platform too. That's there. And you can have a f spiritual affection for your family members. Thank you, Mara. That 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 has helped. Thank you, Haribo. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I this is actually such a timely verse for me because I was just thinking about it this morning and last night before I went to bed. And um, my question is um, that I have come to Krishna consciousness later in my life. And so I have three children who are now young adults. And they are, I'm very close to them. I'm very affectionate with them. And they are very accepting of Krishna consciousness. And so I don't push them, but I do, you know, try to expose them as much as possible. And I was just wondering if you could um, give any more tips for kind of bringing them closer to Krishna. Um, generally, when they're grown up, they're, they're all over 15 years old. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't treat them like children anymore. That's Chanika Pandit explains from, from birth time to five years old, the children are allowed to kind of like exhibit their childlike nature. You just guide that so it doesn't cause them any problems. From six to 14, very strict. Very strict. This is the formative years, and this is where you really have to guide them in the right way. So being strict is actually a good service. From 15 onward, then you treat them like a friend. So treating them like a friend means to in, in, um, encourage them in a positive way. And one of the things that I found with children is they inviting them to go to the temple, invite them to take care, part in kirtans, inviting them to cook prasadam. In other words, just uh, bringing them into the activities of devotional service. Because you don't really have to preach to them. Of course, unless they ask you, ask you questions and you can answer. But generally preaching to them, usually we usually run into a wall the best thing is to do is just, in a positive way, encourage them to take part in, in various times of devotional activities. Specifically with the, with children, devoted children of the same age. And, you know, they may do it or they may not do it. But if you're always encouraging, maybe after some time, they'll, they'll become a little curious. Invite them to take part in programs, invite them to uh, go to the temple, invite them to in, take part in kirtans. In other words, just everything positive. That's what I found works most with 
for children who are grown up. Just try to uh, tweak their interest a little bit. So where they will be inclined to, you know, take part in these things. And, another, and of course, the quality of your own practice will, you know, impact upon them also. So if they see you and they see you developing so many good qualities, they're also becomes attracted. That's very attractive in Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Was that all right? Yes, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Any encouragement I can get in bringing my children closer is helpful. So thank you. Thank you. Your times are really good. <laughs> yes, yes. And one of my children is very drawn to kirtan, so. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the best. <laughs> You see, you got a lion there, huh? <laughs> yes, he likes classes. He always jumps up when, when I'm in class, so. <laughs> Good. Yeah, my pets will be devotees as well. <laughs> well, they'll make, they'll make benefit just by being in, in that area. You give them prashadam? I do, yes. Yeah, 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 you give them prashadam and... They also hear, they can hear, they hear the, they hear the kirtan. They like japa. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All rest to Srila Prabhupada, all rest to your holiness. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Like, um, I always feel that... Um, I came late into Krishna consciousness, like I'm in 40s. So, but uh, by the time we came into Krishna consciousness, our children are grown up. But as you said, Krishna, uh, children are seeing us like how we are doing in our Krishna consciousness. But we are struggling still, Guru Maharaj, like in chanting or reading or daily sadhana. So uh, if, we, if they take us as example, so I don't think that we are a good example for them. But uh, how can... <laughs> How can we, um, how can you motivate them, Guru Maharaj, like to do better than us, like how to make them Krishna conscious more? Well, uh, yeah, they say, you know, example is higher than precept. So your example will also be the best way you can, because uh, generally children follow their parents more than any other form of influence in the world because they're so connected with the parents. So if they develop an attraction for the qualities you're exhibiting, that's the best form of teaching. So practice uh, developing Krishna conscious qualities and these qualities are the things that'll detract them. If they see you're not becoming angry, if they're seeing you're not becoming uh, impatient, if they see that you're developing certain qualities, uh, they'll, also, they'll also see, oh, this is all due to the fact that my mother's a devotee. She's, she's becoming so nice. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, I'm trying, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, if you're trying, Krishna will help you. Don't worry. Yes, Guru Maharaj. With all your blessings. <clears throat> Get them involved in kirtan. Yes, Guru Maharaj. They like people. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's that's the saving. That's that's the attracting force. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्णा महाराज कोटि कोटि अनंत कोटि दंडवत प्रणाम ऑलरेडी वी गेट द आंसर फ्रॉम वैष्णव थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग योर डीप डीप ड्यूशनल एसोसिएशन एवरी फ्राइडे अनंत कोटि दंडवत प्रणाम शिल प्रभुपाद की जय Hey my obeisances is to you also thank you very much sir डिवोशनल सर्विसेस like if i am doing my sadhana at home i am reading i am hearing and i am doing my japa and four regulative principles i am following everything uh, in a proper way so uh, is it required to do uh, services in the temple also it is compulsory um it's not compulsory but it it will definitely be beneficial mm. It will definitely beneficial because in that way you get association with the devotees, and they get association with the deities also. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha is the foundation for for making advancement. It brings happiness. It brings inspiration in our Krishna consciousness. It also brings knowledge too. It's good. What temple are you near? Which one? Ah, uh, Iskon Temple, Bahadur Gad, in Haryana. Sri oh, Radha Madan Kumar. It's a new in temple. In Haryana. Yes, yes, Maharaj, Haryana. Haryana. That's uh, you're anywhere. It's under His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Yeah, Jai Ho. So you, are, that's near Kuru Shakti, isn't it? actually maharaj uh, when i hear about devotees how they are uh, growing uh, materially also while they are uh, endeavoring in spiritual uh, they are materially also sound and i am not so sound in material i am no. having family so i think somewhere ki when i am doing services in temple then i lack in my material growth i am a teacher in school and there is so lot of pressure in the school i have to give time for my school also so somewhere i feel when i devote myself in the temple then i am unable to perform materially well you should have you should maintain yourself nicely in your material life but it doesn't mean you have to catch up to everybody else so that's that's not the goal as long as you have place to stay and you have everything you need to live then fine then you can that makes it easy for you to practice krishna consciousness people who have too much materially they usually don't have enough time or their time gets taken up by uh, more and more material activities so in one sense you are fortunate okay maharaj then with pranam thank you so Sounds, much i'm not sure you like that answer or not <laughs> Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. Definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Don't worry. Krishna takes care of his devotees. Devotees are never, never. They're never starving. They're never in material want. They may have less, but still, like they, they're living. They're they're able to live. I'll try to do my best. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisance mm -hmm. all glories to Shri Prabhu and all glories to Maharaj this is Abhiram Shakadas from Charlotte uh, Maharaj if we uh, have unfulfilled desires in the service of Krishna what happens um is it your like desire like building a temple or serving cows or having a uh, farm community some kind of uh, desires to serve Krishna in a way that we have 
uh, we did, like Charlotte have doesn't have temple, right? And we are aspiring for having temple for so many years, but we are not making progress. So what happens if a devotee leaves his body while he has unfulfilled Krishna conscious desires? Well, those desires are not going to affect you in your relationship with Krishna because they're, they're his service desires. The desire is to, to love Krishna. That's the thing. It's not dependent on what's happening on the external level. It's nice if you want to, you know, preach Krishna consciousness by expanding the yatra, by expanding various types of projects. But those things are in line our mood of service. So we, it doesn't mean that uh, you can still develop your love for Krishna even if you don't fulfill these things. It's, it's between you and Krishna. <laughs> now, if your spiritual master tells you, oh, you should do this service and you must get it done, then that's different. But if, if, if these desires are coming simply by circumstance or by need, uh, they're, they're not going to impact upon your relationship with Krishna. Nothing external can affect our relationship with Krishna. Even if we lose everything, we can still go back home, back to Godhead, if we have developed our love for Krishna. Yeah. Krishna says, Patram Pushram Palam Tayam Yomi Bhakti Panasyati Tadaham Bhakti Uparitam Asnami Vayatat Manaha. He doesn't ask for temples or, you know, lots of money <laughs> or a big feast. He asks for love. That's all he's asking for. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Maharaj, I uh, have this one question, Maharaj. In, this, uh, in the purport, it says, in the same way, although a devotee may enter family life and act very affectionately toward his wife and children, he is not attached to those activities. Right. Yeah, this comes you know, very often, right, Maharaj? Uh, I'm not sure how to act, how to act affectionately without being attached. <laughs> That's the art of bhakti. <laughs> it's not something you can just write it down on a piece of paper and expect it to happen. It's the art of bhakti. When and and of course we mentioned that the more you're attached to Krishna, the more you can be detached from everything else. So really, the strength of that, fulfilling that mood, is mm. our attachment to Krishna. When you have something higher, you may also deal with something less, but still, you don't have to be attracted or attached to that activity or the people involved in it. Yeah, just like, you know, you may go to the store and make friends with the shopkeeper there. And he may tell you about his family and you can you all open your heart to him too and you may become friends. But you know, and you, so after some time you may part and you never see that person again, you may change locations. Now you move on. So we have to keep our affection and attraction for Krishna. That's the main thing. It's like it says, he, the family members are being given affection, but he's not attached to, to that. He takes care, but he doesn't become, uh, what we say, attracted to the activity. So you're, and the, the answer is, the more you become attracted to Krishna, the more you can become detached from this affection from 
everything else. Yes, Maharaj. Like you said, the first statement, it is art. <laughs> then, then anything yeah. else. Yes, yes. And uh, yesterday we were reading, Maharaj, yesterday we were reading, Prabhupada made a comment. Uh, I'm trying to find that statement, Maharaj. Yeah. Like uh, he was saying, he was giving two examples of, uh, you know, when you feed the stomach, all other things are satisfied. And when you feed the water, the root of the tree, all others are satisfied. Like that, uh, I think when we get attracted to Krishna, all other things are affectionately taken care. Yeah, so, exactly. There's a verse. Prabhupada recited that verse from the third canto, I think it is, or sixth canto. I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah Maharaj, this one. Every time we read, it makes again. You know, it it creates some commotion. What is going on here? <laughs> And well, that's yeah. yeah. Krishna is the source, and if you develop your love for Krishna, you also develop your love for everything in relationship to Krishna. You even love the non-devotees who you don't even know, but your love takes the form of trying to serve them by giving them Krishna consciousness. Yes, Maharaj. Again, taking care of family is again a prescribed duty. Mm -hmm. Is that really? Yeah, it's uh, that's prescribed duty because that's one of the services for a grihasta. You have to know where the limit is, and you have to know where the minimum is also. Not taking care means doesn't mean you spend a hundred percent of your time doing that. Yeah, here, Mara, they found that. This one yesterday we were reading as a watering the root of a tree, one automatically distributes water to the leaves and branches. So by acting in Krishna consciousness, one can render the highest service to everyone, namely self, family, society, country, humanity, etc. If one is satisfied by one by one's action, if Krishna is satisfied by one's actions, then everyone will be satisfied. Yeah. yeah. When you're a Krishna conscious, people like you. <laughs> you want to automatically become attractive. We actually become attractive to others as we become Krishna conscious. Yeah, thank you very much, Maharaj, for saying that initial word that it is an art, not just a statement or something. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Little, yeah, the voice is very faint. You have to increase the volume. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Is it better? Okay. okay. That's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, thank you for such a wonderful class with so many uh, realizations and lessons for us. Uh, actually, there is a question in the chat. Uh, can I read that for you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Dandavat Pranam, Guru Maharaj. This is from uh, Mohana Sini Radha Mataji. Um, but, it, but it is not that easy to give up all material attachments if we lose everything. My understanding is that if Krishna takes everything else, job, house, family, or whatever else that's material, we just depend on Krishna, take his shelter, and focus on this relationship to be able to give up even the attachment to this body. Is that right? Thank you. Yeah. Your humble self. Yeah. Uh, it's an experience. Yeah, well, just like if you're eating and you finished eating, when you're satisfied, somebody comes along with some more food. You may even like that food, but you say, no, no, I, I had enough, I'm satisfied. So it's Krishna, Krishna consciousness produces complete spiritual satisfaction. You can complete spirit, spirit, satisfaction on all levels. 
So you, you don't have to kind of try to figure it out. It's, it, it happens automatically. The example I gave, yeah, the example I gave of eating, when you're full and you're satisfied, somebody will come along with maybe even your favorite dish and you say, oh, uh, maybe I'll take it later. I can't eat now. You're satisfied. When you're satisfied, you're satisfied. And Krishna consciousness brings complete satisfaction for the body, from the mind, for the soul, for the senses, for the intelligence. Guru Maharaj, but shall we pray in that way that he will uh, take everything away? No, just do your service nicely. And if he wants to take it away, he will. If you're ready, if you're ready for to make that prayer, you can make that prayer, but you should be ready to experience what happens. Because I've seen devotees pray like that. And then when Krishna takes everything away, they get nervous and start feeling like something's wrong, you know. But we, you know, don't worry. The material energy is already giving us a lot of trouble. Just, <laughs> just do your service nicely. And whatever Krishna sends, you can use. And whatever Krishna doesn't send, you're not, you're not interested. In. Guru Maharaj, you said also that we should always try to uh, uh, become uh, better and better, also in our spiritual life. Like, for example, I have received my first initiation, and uh, shall we try to uh, develop some special qualities to uh, get the second initiation, or are there any yeah. other requirements? Yeah, yeah. Generally, when the qualities are being exhibited by the devotee, that's an indication they're ready for the next initiation. Yeah, so yeah, we should practice those qualities of the mode of goodness. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to Your Holiness. Thank you for this uh, really enlightening lecture on how we must keep moving progressively from one stage to another if we really want to reach Krishna's lotus feet. Am I correct when I heard you say that we must practice more and more attachment to Krishna? That's the only way we can get detachment from material situations and uh, move slowly onwards to Vanaprastha after completing all our duties. But if we are not able to detach, then it's better to remain in the ashram and practice detachment rather than prematurely give up something. Um, well, the situation might warrant that you you know you went through that you went through all the stages but the attachment is still there. Yeah, so what can you do? You you can't try to refill try to refill those attachments because they're material and they'll only bring you know the same problems that you had in your previous situations. So all you can do is just practice Krishna consciousness. And strengthen your spiritual life through chanting, through reading, through serving. We we're asking these questions because we don't have the higher taste. When you have the higher taste, then everything becomes easy to understand. We want to get that higher taste. The higher taste comes through serving Vaishnavas. Higher taste comes through serving Vaishnavas and through through chanting the holy names. These were the higher taste comes.
if you don't have that higher taste and all these questions keep coming up and you're just going around in the circle, we want that high, this is what Krishna consciousness is about. It's about executing our devotional service and moving forward through the different stages. So if we are not getting that higher taste, then we should emphasize those activities which will help to bring us that higher taste, which is Vaishnav Seva and Namruchi. Here's where the ecstasy is in serving Vaishnavas and in chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. And Lord Chaitanya added the third one, Jiva Doya, preaching to the conditioned souls. That also brings higher taste because it, it's directly the heart of Krishna. Yeah. And uh, how do we know that we are not making excuses for not carrying out our material duties just because we feel it's a big bother and say, oh, this is too much bother. I'm taking sannyas. I, this wife and child, they're giving me too much trouble. So I'm, I'm out of here. I'm taking sannyas. Well, if you, have a if you make a decision to do something, something that is significant, and definitely one requires guidance. That's why we have Sadhu Sangha, Association with Devotees. And it's so where we have a society, it's the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. We have so many opportunities to get our questions answered, get directions clarified. We go to the right people, ask the right questions, and be ready for whatever is being given to us. In some cases, that decision may be good. In other cases, it may not be. Each case is developed, is uh, judged individually. Thank well, you're you so much. Yeah, you're finished with material life now. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, you're you're you know you're in that phase where you can just absorb yourself in serving, chanting, preaching. You got the perfect environment also. Yeah, I'm just asking because I want to know how to guide if people ask. That's why I was asking about different scenarios. Thank you so much for enlightenment. Okay, Hare Krishna. Okay, where are we on the time scale? Yeah, I think I have to depart soon because there is some thing that I have to do within the next hour. Okay, so thank you very much and we can uh, see you all. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you for the beautiful answers today. The answers were so beautiful, so instructive, so so much to learn. So, yes, uh, we can end here. So, we can offer obeisances to Maharaj now. Vancham Kalparubeshya Kipa Sindhu Evcha Patitanam Pavne Bhyo Vaishyavibhyo Namunana Anand Koti Vaishyavandi Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupad Ki Jai Granth Rashimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Thank you so much Maharaj Hare Krishna Thank you so much Maharaj Hare Krishna Thank you so much Thank you very much Guru Maharaj Very wonderful class and question answers Hare Krishna Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. 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 Thank you.